of a psychotherapist, Lucy Berriford, joins me now. Many thanks for joining us this evening. Pleasure. It's very easy for us to sit here and say that parents need to talk to children more about this, but it, it's not an easy conversation for many parents to have with their children, is it? Well, it's a very difficult conversation because it's about sex and parents get very squeamish about talking about things like that. And also it's about technology and quite a lot of parents want to wash their hands of it and say, oh, I don't really understand it. I think I'll let my children deal with it. But the key thing to remember is that the adolescent brain is developing and it makes it harder for teenagers in particular to have any sense of the consequences of their actions and it also prevents them having good impulse control so it's absolutely vital that parents explain to their children what the potential consequences are both in terms of legal ramifications and just in terms of general embarrassment well like you say it is talking to your parents about sex I mean are children likely to be honest about what they're up to not necessarily but if you can imagine that they are getting a lot of influence from their peer group it's even even more important that parents should be parents, not to try to be their best friend, but to be their parents, to be their guide and to be their educator and to explain carefully, patiently and consistently, i.e. not just one conversation but perhaps several, to get over that message that there are very big consequences of indulging in this very impulsive behaviour. You think you're doing something very briefly, but as the VT showed, once that picture, once that text is out there, you can never get it back. And what kind of impact? Can that have on a young person's life? Deep humiliation, which is you know something that makes people want to retreat, great shame, great embarrassment, and it can really affect their friendships with their friends because they think people are talking about them behind their back or thinking that they're easy. It, it can colour their sense of identity. And uh, young people are always going to experiment, aren't they? I mean, for any young person out there who enjoys sexting at the moment, what would you suggest to them, that they, how they go about things to be more safe? I think there needs to be some kind of uh, protocol to say to yourself, I'm not going to ever send a text without giving myself a 10 minute break before I think about it. That way you start to learn about self-control and um, delayed gratification, and hopefully the moment will pass when you feel that impulse to send that message. It's alarming, isn't it? In Cathy's report, it talks about how 88% um, of the images that were put online by children over a month were duplicated onto other websites mm. and obviously infiltrated by paedophiles. That's the scary thing. The message has got to be, once you've sent a text or a message or a photo, it is out of your control. You cannot get it back. So if you want to retain control of your personal integrity and your sense of self-worth, then always reconsider before you press that button. Okay, good advice. Many thanks, Lisa Bresson.